it's almost the exact opposite of what we saw last week, where there was a sell-off in the S&P 500, but that was led by financials to your point. I'm sorry, led by technology to your point. Those cyclicals were um, actually holding up really nicely. What I find kind of interesting is if you look at the investor sentiment surveys, investors actually got very bullish last week. And this tends to happen. It seems very contrarian. When people get over optimistic, you are going to get a sell off here. You're going to get people taking their profits. And I think seeing corrections like this is a very healthy thing in the markets because they can't just go up continuously or we are going to get into that melt up territory, which can bring you back to a meltdown. But seeing these sell-offs and bringing those valuations back to closer to where they should be is actually a good thing. And it really should be a buying opportunity if you're looking for the long term here as an investor. We look at what's going on in Europe and cases are exceeding what we saw back in the worst of this pandemic. Uh, even Larry Kudlow admitting that there could be a chance here that we see lockdowns coming back. I mean, uh, is there not some logical extension there that you could say this could be the beginning of investors fearing that here in the U.S. we could see some sort of return to that as well? Yeah, I mean, that's that's what we have to watch out for is there is a lot of unknown right now. We don't know. Are, is there is this the second wave that's coming? Are there going to be shutdowns? I'm also getting a lot of fear from clients of mine of what is the election going to mean for the stock markets? And you can kind of pick your poison with what the uncertainty is, but there is always going to be some sort of uncertainty like that in the markets. So the best thing you can do is just make sure you do have some safety built in. But there are still a lot of areas of the economy that are recovering, are actually showing a lot of good data, even with COVID cases coming and going. And I think you just want to make sure that we're not just looking over the next one to two months, we're looking over the next one year, three years, five years, and just any dips that you're going to see here, just as we saw in March, were a wonderful buying opportunity. So if there's a dip, just take advantage of it. I don't think it's anything to be fearful of because we can see that. It is a very normal part of how the stock markets work, but I would actually argue there's still a lot of value. And I would also argue a lot of upside potential here. But you also have advocated a look at small caps here in terms of relative value there. What are you seeing uh, when you look a little bit smaller rather than some of these other big, big companies we're talking about? Yeah, I still I, we've been talking about this for the last several months. But when you're looking at the markets, your tech or your growth companies have just continued to outperform. But your value or your dividend paying stocks, I've really preferred. But just to get more granular in that, it's your small companies that are just so much more undervalued right now. They're about 30 percent cheaper than your big brand names are. And especially coming out of big times like this, where we've had a hit on the economy. It is those small value companies that tend to recover. And we're starting to see glimpses of that happen. So just considering, yes, the markets are sold off here a bit, but they're still pretty darn close to where they started for the year and their highs. But looking at some of those, like your small caps and specifically your small cap values, those are still well off their highs here and significantly cheaper than your large companies. So if I'm adding any money right now, I think that's a really good place to take advantage of and just make sure you're getting those dividends. You still have that long term growth potential. And that's a great place to capture both of those things. Give me some of those names that you do enjoy here uh, that you might be adding in an environment like this. Yeah, and I, I don't pick individual companies. I I think it's great when we do that. I just think there's a lot of unnecessary risk that when I'm looking with my clients and we're planning for a longer term time horizon, I'm trying to take that risk out of those individual companies. So I really like things like Vanguard or Charles Schwab has some really low cost exchange traded funds. Like for example, you can look at the um, Vanguard small cap exchange traded fund. I'm sorry, sorry, specifically the Vanguard small cap value exchange traded fund. Um, iShares is one that's very similar. A lot of companies have them, but I really like those low cost ones. So those are two of the names that I really like right now. Uh, outside of, of some of these other things coming through, including maybe a, a deal between Republicans and Democrats, though that seems uh, less and less likely the closer we get to an election. Uh, JP Morgan is at least raising one catalyst here that seems intriguing when you think about rebalancing portfolios at month end, uh, noting that equities have significantly underperformed bonds on a month to date basis by about 8%. Uh, and you think about what could happen there, as well as quarterly adjustments, so they say monthly uh, could weigh a little bit heavier here. I mean, is that a catalyst enough to maybe say at the end of September that could maybe spark uh, a signal that the worst could be over when we think about whether or not this is a correction or something more serious? Yeah, quite possibly. Those are definitely things that we're going to want to be watching. And it is a good point you bring up is 
rebalancing your accounts is always a great idea. You want to look and say, okay, my stocks have underperformed. Take from your bonds and buy back into the stocks. That's the beauty of always having a piece in your portfolio like bonds or cash that you always have the ability to buy back in because timing the bottom is next to impossible. So making sure that you're adding money in, but have some additional dry powder that you can do it again if the markets go further is a great idea. And that's one thing we don't want to forget is there is still so much cash on the sidelines right now because so many people did get nervous in March and sold out of their investments. And they've been waiting for this second shoe to drop or some sort of second dip in the markets and are waiting to get back in. And we've started to see that, that people are buying back in on these dips and it might make them a lot less severe. So that's something we definitely want to keep watching. And especially as we head up to the election, there could be volatility leading up to then. Um, we just want to see those buys get made and these dips um, could very well be a lot um, uh, a lot shallower than people are anticipating.